Another busy week for the Trump administration. On Monday, President Trump slammed the media for underreporting terror. Tuesday, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals heard arguments on the travel ban. And on the Hill, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell sidelined Senator Liz Warren in a dramatic moment. Yesterday, the president learned of the fallout from the Ninth Circuit ruling against him on his extreme betting order. There was a lot more, too. So here now with all where all this is going, Chris Starwalt, our Fox News politics editor. Alex Conant was a communications director for Marco Rubio's presidential campaign. Julia Ginsky is a Democratic analyst and Fox News contributor. Great to have all of you here. Um, so let's take it on. 21 days in, it feels like we've been here for about 1,000. Um, but uh, so much has happened. Chris, what's your take on what, what this week looked like for the Trump administration? Well, we're still in the early going, uh, and there were definitely misses, uh, but there were some successes. There were some pretty notable successes. One is we saw some bipartisan agreement on the, on the position the administration started rough out last week on Iran, where you saw Democrats and Republicans alike coming together in favor of sanctions. So that was a sign that on a foreign policy front, things could be moving in a good direction, something you heard echoed today uh, when he was with the prime minister of Japan, talking about agreement with China and so on and so on. So you're starting to see some good things there. Uh, but as you pointed out, uh, the Ninth Circuit and that decision and the fold roll and the constant outrage surrounding that issue, uh, not so good. Yeah. Um, so what grade would you give the week, Chris? I'm going, uh, I, I had him at a B, but then I got to say that the Nordstrom stuff takes him down to a C plus for the week. Mm. Elaborate on the on the Nord. What, what's your you know? How, do, do people care about that? Is my question. I no, mean, that's I know the we point. all obsess over it, and you know, I talked to Kellyanne about it last night. But do you think people care about it in America? That's the point. They do not. Therefore, the president should not talk about it, nor should he have his spokesperson yeah. or his leading strategist discussing the issue. You got to focus on the business of the people. That costs him uh, <clears throat> half a letter grade. Yeah. All right. Chris, he's such a tough grader. Alex Conant. <laughs> um, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I didn't have Chris. Um, Alex, what do you think of the week? Yeah, look, Chris is a smart guy. I really disagree with him, but I actually give the president a slightly better grade. I'd give him a B. The early days are all about setting up processes and personnel. And mm. he had a lot of success with personnel this week, getting several key cabinet officials confirmed. And my sources in the White House tell me that the processes are being put in place to have better executive orders moving forward so we don't have these sort of legal fights that the president and the White House have lost this week and last. So I think that they're moving in the right direction. Therefore, I'd give them a solid B. Solid B. Julie Roginski is going to give him an A plus. I just know it. I, I just <laughs> know she is because so Julie's close. such a fan. Um, <laughs> Julie, what did you think? How'd they do this week? Well, you know, I, I think Chris is right. He did have some successes, and, and Alex is right as well. I mean, he, he did get his people confirmed. Um, there was some question about Betsy DeVos. She was confirmed. So in that sense, that was a good win for the White House. I will say the most troubling thing to me this week was actually what happened yesterday and this morning with Michael Flynn, uh, which is a problem that could potentially last much longer than just the week, where Michael Flynn seemingly... Uh, forced the vice president to come out and say something that charitably could be called several untruths about whether he discussed sanctions with the Russian ambassador prior to him becoming national security mm -hmm. advisor. And so that becomes a big problem that potentially could open the administration up to hearings on the issue. Right. Uh, and so as a result of that, I would give him a C minus. C minus. So Chris, C's from Julie and Chris. Chris, let me go back around the horn to you on that, though. How big a deal is this Michael Flynn Russia question? So we have a very leaky administration right now, and it is springing leaks on all sides, and that is a big problem. Uh, every administration leaks. This one leaks a lot. Uh, and if, how much of this is due to infighting, we don't know. Uh, but oftentimes that is the root cause. And if there is a schism in the administration or there are people who don't trust Flynn or Flynn doesn't trust them and this stuff is springing out of that space, mm -hmm. that could be, in addition to the hearings Julie mentioned, that could be on a going forward basis a big problem. So, but on the substance of it, Alex, you know, Chris is talking about the political um, ramifications, which are very real. Um, on the substance of it, is it problematic, Alex? It could be problematic. The, the, this is all coming about because apparently the FBI is looking into these calls. And if but that they is said true. There was nothing illegal in them. I mean, I mean well, that, that's the latest. And if, and, and if nothing is illegal, then this, I think, will be quickly forgotten and be chalked up to an early mistake, some early miscommunication uh, within the administration. If there's more to it, yes, it's absolutely a, a problem. When the vice president goes on TV, as he did on CBS's Face the Nation a couple of weeks ago, and asserts something that then is proven, that then is reported to be not true. 
that is an issue that the administration will have to deal with at some point. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the story is that he mentioned uh, to a high-level Russian official um, not to worry about the sanctions or something along those lines. We don't know exactly what he said. Right. But and there was an indication that, that maybe there would be relief in the future, which instantly reminded me of the moment that, that uh, President Obama said that um, to Medvedev. You know, like, don't worry. As soon as, as, soon as I get reelected, you know, we're gonna, all this stuff is going to go away. Yeah. We'll have more flexibility, Julie. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is, first and foremost, he was not supposed to be doing uh, and talking policy before he was the national security advisor. We have one president at a time. But secondly, this is part of a larger pattern of Russian potential Russian interference in the election, whether Michael Flynn, who had acknowledged accepting payments from Russia today, which is a propaganda arm of the Putin administration, was involved in some of that. And so you have people like, so this is not a democratic issue. You have senators like Senator McCain, Senator Graham, mm -hmm. and others who are very serious about looking into this. If this is the predicate for that kind of investigation to be launched, that could be a massive headache for the Trump administration yeah. going forward. So going back to it quickly uh, to the Nordstrom question, Chris, because mm. I know you're a big shopper, and I know this is a big <laughs> issue for you, you can, and you're really concerned about it. You can tell. It. I'm going to give you the last word on this here. What do they need to do to make sure, because th this is going to happen again and again with you know businesses and interests, they need to be on the same page at the White House, do they not, about how they're going to respond to these kind of questions? Not only do they have to be on the same page at the White House, but they must not steal the president's central message, which is was something we would say in West Virginia about Jay Rockefeller when he came down there to be senator. He's too rich to steal. So just make sure that that is carried forward. That Donald Trump is always seen as doing the people's business yeah. and not enriching himself right. and his family, even if it's just gotcha. a dad being nice to his daughter. You guys are great. Thank you so much.